Sawabona, Doberdan, and Anyang Haseo. Hey, it's Tom from Green Shorts. And I've been so stoked about how well this grill on top of the rocket stove is working that I want to move this to my back porch so I can use it more frequently. But I'm not going to move my big sand table here from Rocket Stove Row, of course. So I'm going to make a purpose-built stand for this rocket stove to have it at the same height as the grill I've got over there now. It'll also make this look a little more official so that my wife approves of its new location. So the new location is going to go right here beside my grill, which I've already retrofitted with a miniature rocket stove inside here. The size of this stove has made it really great for sautéing um, with a cast iron pan on the top here, but not enough heat from this for cooking chicken, which is what I do mainly on this side of the grill. So my goal with the rocket stove is to be able to have it right here. I may lower this table or maybe even take that off and then have the space right here opened up a little bit so that I can have this rocket stove as a third burner for my grill set up here. They are almost done with that demo. Loading up the scrap metal today. This sound will hopefully not be annoying that much longer. But you know me though, I couldn't let that pile of metal go uninspected. With permission, I actually salvaged an old bike. It's pretty messed up. But my plan is to use the rims and the chain and the gears for a trommel. Stay tuned for that in the new year. So I got the rocket stove and I brought it down to the garage so I can design a proper firebox. I've been getting by just setting this on bricks with a grate, but I want to make something a little bit nicer using some sheet metal and fire bricks as well as some refractory cement. But first I'm gonna get my dimensions. It's about 11 inches wide. And of course 11 inches deep as well. Part of what I'm gonna to use to help set the final dimensions for this firebox are the fire brick that I'm using. I'm actually gonna use one out front like a hearth since this will be standing on its own. I use one to go underneath the firebox and then two to make up the sides. And I've actually got a partial fire brick that I'm gonna use for the back. All right, so I'm gonna get all the dimensions for my metal box. I'm gonna build up the base with some scrap. I'm gonna cut this to size and weld it up. For the hearth ledge, I'm going to just weld on a couple of tabs. I'm also going to notch out these two corners. With my base complete, I'm going to cut and build the sides. The sides are gonna be the height of my brick plus the height of the grill, and then a little bit of air, because I'm gonna be sealing the grill to the top of the firebox with a little bit of stove mortar. So it looks like five inches, ought to be just right. I decided instead of cutting all the way through, I'd notch it and then bend my corners. 
and I'll just weld them back in. I don't want to fatigue these corners too much or they'll break. Of course I thought about that bending method when I'd already measured for my long side. So I'll have the three inch tab here on the front to weld in place. The bend adds about an eighth of an inch in this case, which is about the thickness of the metal. So I'm going to account for that in my measurement. Now I'm going to weld this to the base and then I'll add my additional 3 inch panel. I'm going to start by tacking in one side and then I'll square it up as I move around. I'm going to start with this long side. This corner is a little bit less than 90 right now so I'll get this straight and then straighten this out as I weld it in. Now I'm going to fill in the corners. It wants to blow right through when I get to the parts that are cut. I'm going to lower my voltage. Much better. I actually lowered the gauge as well from 11 to 16. I figure it's thinner there where I'm welding and I'm just trying to fill that in so still a little thick but a whole lot better than than that. I'm going to try dialing down the voltage just a little bit more. Got the corners nicely rounded. Now I'm gonna do a second pass with a flap disc to kind of smooth things out. All right, I'm gonna check the fit up on my bricks. Pretty good. I cut the corners off the front two bricks so that they fit up over the weld. Easier to cut the bricks than to grind the weld inside that box. I'm also going to trim up this fire brick as well. I left a little room for the mortar. This fireplace mortar rated for 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to put these bricks in with a thin bead of stove mortar. And then I'll pack some lava rock in around the sides so the firebox doesn't move around. All right, that first half inch of lava rock locked into that mortar I put around the edges. I'll hold the bottom of the firebox in place. 
and provide some additional insulation. Let me go ahead and fill this in the rest of the way. I just realized something. I'm going to be covering up metal. So I'm going to hit the front edges here with some high temperature paint just where I'm going to be blocking it with uh, that hearth brick which I pulled up. Perfect example of a grinder and paint making me the welder I ain't. I'm going to seat the grill with a bead of mortar. I'm going to go ahead and push it all the way over to this side just because I've got that rail right here and this section crosses the firebox just fine. To cap off the firebox, I'm going to use refractory cement. I'm just going to mix this up until it's workable. I'm being extra cautious not to overwet this. I overwet this. I think that'll do it. One nice feature of this castable refractory cement is that it can be painted once it's dry. Initially I was thinking about welding a top on this box, but I think I'm just going to use the cement to form the cap. Alright, that ended up being more workable than I thought it was going to be. And I'm really happy with how this looks. Alright, I've let this set up a little bit enough that it can hold weight. I'm going to get it set up outside and test it out. I'm going to make a proper stand for this in my next video. This one's getting long and I'm dying to fire this and see how it works. Made a temporary pedestal. I'm gonna bring out the firebox. And now for the rocket stove. Time to make a fire. Thanks for the torch, JW. Two things I know I'm gonna build in part two. One, an ashtray. And two, I'm probably gonna build a little bridge here that sits out to let me have some longer sticks out here. Uh, the way that the grill fits back in like that, it won't support sticks that stick out the front. Got a nice draft going. Flames coming out the top. Yeah, I'm definitely going to want more fuel support out here. Nice rocket sound. All right, I am happy with how this turned out. It's gonna need a coat of paint. And stay tuned for part two. We're gonna make the stand, the ashtray, and then an extension for the front of this. Perhaps with a little bit of a, a funnel on it to channel air in there. It'll also help support the firewood as it sticks out the front a little bit. Special thanks to my patrons for helping make these videos possible. If you'd like to join me over on Patreon for some extra content, and a Discord channel, check out the description below. As always, my mission here at Green Schwartz is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. A rocket stove is green because I'm using found fuel 
and I'm burning it efficiently and using that heat to cook. Let's hope 2021 is better than 2020, but thanks for your support and thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next Saturday.